morning beautiful people and welcome to book club corner every wednesday we are here in the beautiful city of scarborough tobago and we talk to authors publishers writers about their love of the literary arts about their books about the publishing industry and it's no different here today. We have an amazing author with us today, and his name is Kieran Isaac. Welcome, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's really, really good to be here. I'm excited to finally be here. <laughs> yes, it's been a while in coming, right? <laughs> yes, it's been a long time coming, but we made it happen. And That's here, right. I'm excited. <laughs> Kieran is the author of four books, an amazing feat. He's the author of four books and we are so happy to have him here with us this morning on Book Club Corner. He is also the Poetry Slam 2024 finalist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to talk about that, right? <laughs> Spoken word artist, yes, right? Yes. And poet. And we're really happy to have him here. But you know how we do it. We, you know, it's lunchtime somewhere. Somebody's eating and drinking somewhere, <laughs> right? We won't, we won't be left out, Kieran. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> so we have with us today some cane juice. You know, we had some of this cane juice earlier on in the year, in January, when we were making sure we were organized and cleansed and hydrated, right? We had cane juice and coconut water, but we have more cane juice today. So we have been sipping on cane energy. That's a local vendor. It's right across the road from the port mall where we are on third floor. And if you want to get some cane energy, you just hop right on over across the street from port mall. He's right there with his whole kit and caboodle and he has different kinds of cane juice. And today we have cane and ginger. Yeah? Yes, yes. So cheers to you, Kiran. <laughs> cheers to you. Mm. Yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he warned me, he said, listen, it's not as strong as the ginger you had from me last time. Eh? <laughs> no, it's uh, not, yeah, not too strong, yeah. it's just, just right. <laughs> he said, you know, the ginger, and I guess it's rainy season, so the crops are coming in, you know, a little milder flavored and so yeah. on. Even the cane juice isn't, because this earlier this year, it was so weak. Right. <laughs> yeah, so now it's, you know, a little more diluted and yeah. mild. The rains are coming in, so you'll find your fruits and your vegetables giving you that kind of, you know, a very mild flavor. Plums are coming in, Definitely. you know. The school is open, right? The students are back up, you know, they're back at school since Monday. Some schools will be open next week as well. Mm -hmm. But please, just be mindful as you're on the streets, the children are out, the grannies and grandpas to drop off their sweet little grandchildren. They are out, right? Lots of traffic on the road. Get out there early and get where you have to go, right? Be mindful. You don't own the road. Your father didn't pave it. Right, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful, right? That is true. Get yourself together. Make sure you have your insurance and all the things you have to have. Your car is in good working condition. And, you know, just be watchful. Everybody's not our best driver, as they say, right? Yeah. And some start early. Yeah. So we want to go on a quick break, but we are chilling here with Kieran Isaac, four time book author. And we're having some K energy juice. We're going to be back with Kieran and Kieran. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about his inspiration for his books. So listen, get your snacks, get your drink. It's lunchtime. You're probably eating something right now, something really delicious. Relax yourself. Don't go far. We'll be back in a few minutes. Jewel Green and we're in a beautiful city of Scarborough, Tobago. And we're chatting here today with author, poet, spoken word artist, Kieran Isaac. Yes. yes. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> He's the author of four books and we're talking about your experience. Yeah. He has written four books. He's a poetry, poetry, um, I am the tree, reindeer hour and my culture and me coloring book. And his book has the 2024 poetry slam finalist, right? Yes. Kieran, tell me about this experience that you had um, being a spoken word poetry slam 
finalists, right? Yeah. So you went through the entire competition. Yeah. Yeah. How harrowing was that? It is. Uh... Honestly, I'm a pretty confident person, but it's probably the most nerve-wracking thing you would ever do. Yeah. And I know you were a judge. No, I, w I was uh, not. No, uh, no. I was. Do uh, I hosted the Eat right, the Bagel end right, of you hosted, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 because I saw you. But put in a plug for me. I don't mind. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Future judge, right? We speak a little bit. Yeah, but um, it, it's something yeah. I always wanted to do. But, you know, like sometimes you talk yourself out of things. Yes. So, um, what's so interesting is um, people know that I, I guess I would say I'm a talker, you know, I talk and I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. So I guess when they put being a poet and being able mm -hmm. to talk on stage together, people automatically assume, okay, next stop is being a spoken word artist. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't so easy of a transition for me. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think mostly it's because I overthinked it, which mm -hmm. surprised some people. They're like, yeah, you don't overthink nothing. You just do your thing. I say, nah, I really overthink and? it. Because I think growing up watching it for so much years and you have such respect for the artists, mm -hmm. you kind of tell yourself like, I can't, yeah, I can't do that. And it's really competitive. It's so yeah. competitive. And um, I kind of joke and say my style of spoken word is a little different. Um, it's more, a little bit comedic, mm -hmm. a little bit satire, a little bit. Somebody says it's even cynical in a way. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's funny. And um, what making it to the finals made me realize that my voice or my my genre of spoken poetry was actually validated and appreciated mm -hmm. which was like so encouraging so i think yeah. i'm now that i have my foot and i can come as a finalist i feel like i outside and, and i need and to go back so and, next year again yeah, yeah for sure I, i'm already started writing <laughs> and i have other ideas and i think it's really i think it's powerful for people to just get out of their heads and just you need to validate yourself first and tell yourself mm -hmm. yes right before anybody else say anything yeah and just test it out even if you just see it in your room in front of your family or mm -hmm. you send a friend or something mm -hmm. or even like reach out to the other spoken with artists and they would actually they actually like train together and coach together it's actually is interesting because they're so competitive but also supportive mm -hmm. is the strangest combination I've ever seen. Yeah. In my, they will rehearse together and then they'll go on the stage and be like, I'm coming for your truth. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I, and I actually, I love that so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. It's like this kind of iron sharpens iron kind of mm -hmm. thing. And um, it's but, really, yes. But when so, you're performing, mm -hmm. I'm not your friend. Yeah, <laughs> and that's exactly it. Like, uh, <laughs> We're not friends, That's right? exactly it. Like okay. we train together and then when the stage is like every man for himself. That's and I, right. I absolutely love that. Yeah, you have to get it together. <laughs> And yeah. I, congrats to Boca Slit yeah, and the sure. First Citizens for yeah. putting this program together. It's something yeah. that we really, really need, it's right? So true. And it's a great platform. All the artists, spoken word, poetry. Yeah. Yeah. If you're into those things, you know, look out for next year. And I think they already put out something for um, looking for um, yeah. artists for next year. Window that they, yeah, yeah so, because they they always on the go yeah. to me. Focus never sleeps and right. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so you all get yourself together, get your poetry starter right, and get ready. There is nothing that helps you figure out um one your genre, as you said, Definitely, right? Yeah. And what you want to do than yeah, competing. Exactly. And listen, nobody laughs at you. No, right? it's, so it's really encouraging. Maybe like people gonna laugh, they ain't gonna like what I say, they won't understand. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. We don't know. Yeah, but you'll and never you will know. know. Ex and that's exactly it. That's my thing about everything. You don't know until mm -hmm. you try it. You have to get out of yeah. your head. You have to get out of your head. <laughs> we have a photo of you um, at the competition. Could we, yes. could we bring that photo up of um, Q? Listen, yes. look at it. Powerful, man. <laughs> that's me in the finals. <laughs> that's, um, I did a piece on food security, you know, the grocery prices. Yes. You know, they're hopping up. So I did it like a, um, it was actually quite comical. It was like a game show kind of price is right kind of vibe. Ah. You know, so I was like, you know, I, like you know, I, would, I was like, um, I can't get my prices to come on down. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> And it was it was quite playful. It was like a pun on like a lot of if you follow yeah. if a lot of people follow like game channel. It was a mm -hmm. pun on a lot of the game shows, chain yeah. reaction and stuff like that. So I kind of maneuvered it 
to fit the concept of what I wanted to talk about. And everyone mm. in the audience, I got like such great feedback, which was so encouraging yes. about it. And they said, it was like, you know, you didn't win, but this is okay. It was, it was memorable. It was yeah. unique. I've never seen something like it. And that made me feel so good. I mean, the money would feel better, <laughs> but <laughs> it feel great yes. knowing that in my first finals, I was seen and heard and validated. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, your cox for more, except yeah. for those dollars. But I mean, <laughs> I go yes, we, we'd all love to get $50,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. right live. now. Let's go, go back next year and get your money, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Get paid. As Rihanna say, you better have my money. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. So you've written four books, mm -hmm. right? And one of those books yes. is right so let's go through those books we have the book covers if, if you put that put those covers up for me so we have um the coloring book yes we, we have, have my culture and me right the, reindeer, the reindeer our, our. let me see the others bring them up guys bring them up <laughs> so we have reindeer hour we have i am the, I tree. Am the tree we have Poetry. poetry yeah um, a nice play on words there yeah, yeah. That was, this was my first one i'm really proud of that title yeah. <laughs> and we also have the other one which is the coloring book yes yeah, let's culture. start with this coloring book of course yeah. because i know we the conversation is yeah. um happening now in the space of um, persons who write yeah. about content, low content books, right? right? Yeah. So whether they be coloring books or yeah. journals or stuff like that, yeah. um, the concern is that AI right, is right, right. doing a lot of that work, uh -huh. right? Yeah. But what I like about your book is that we can see, yeah. one, because they're cultural, yeah. local characters, yeah. right? And the two, because they literally, a lot of them look like, you know, somebody did them. Yeah. Definite. And I really love that. It's, yeah. you know, it's encouraging to persons who may be using the book to color. Yeah. To even do their own drawings. Definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. I really like that. What inspired this coloring book? Yeah. So, so, so the funny story is that... um so my, in my poetry books, there are line drawings attached to most of the poems, mm -hmm. right? So what I did is that I joked that at Christmas, sales are really great for authors, right? Authors, you need to maximize on Christmas sales. But after Christmas, I was like, how to make some more money? Honestly, <laughs> yeah. that's what I was thinking. And I was going through my Instagram and I had some of the line drawings. What I did is I put them against a white background mm -hmm. and I was like... But it's looking like a coloring book. I was mm. like, it's a black and white drawing again. So, so this was up maybe like January, February. I was like, maybe mm. I should fit in. A, and I had enough drawings to put to the, and I didn't even use all, um, because uh, the majority of the poems are accompanied with local drawings, like mm -hmm. the Scarlet Ibis, Doubles, Steel yeah. Pan, that kind of thing. So I figured, I was like, why not just put it in a coloring book? Mm -hmm. And... I kind of teased it on my page. I was like, hey, what do you think about this coloring book? People were like, this, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wait, now I was sitting down on this idea all the time. And I didn't realize there was actually like a gap for it anymore. Yes. Right? So when I put it out, the reaction was quite nice. So, and then people, I was like, why did I think of this sooner? So yeah. I think that ch not only children's um, products, but local, you know, it's cultural. And, um, I really am trying to push it some more now. Mm -hmm. So it's out there. Now I'm just trying to market it properly. Yeah. But the interest is definitely there. Yeah. Everybody who sees it, they're like, wow. This is like, this is, this is... I'm not saying that there aren't other local coloring books, like big up all the other local coloring books. But I'm, yes, psyched, I'm excited to add to that, yeah. you know, that repertoire. You know, good. when when we talk about coloring books, I, I get a little touchy and offended, Kieran, because they always say, oh, coloring books for the children. Children what? No, and adults. I, I just color. <laughs> Listen, I remember when uh -huh. we, you, I used to be at TGI Fridays. Yeah. They're going for their little book the, uh, thing. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they used to have, listen, I fight them with them color. <laughs> I go in over with my crayons, you know. Don't mess with me, you know. You know, they would give you two placemats, but yeah, it's a yeah, few yeah, of yeah. us. Yeah. Listen, I get in, in that booth first to get that color, <laughs> that little color. Big people like to color, yeah. right? And it's therapeutic. Great, I'll leave one with you as well. <laughs> That's right. right. It's therapeutic. Yeah, it so is, I it like is, it that is, yeah. idea. And some of the characters, um, mm -hmm. they're carnival characters yes. as well in there. Yes, we have like Fancy Sailor, mm -hmm. Mukujombi, um, Dam Lorraine, Minstrel. Um, 
we have Scarlet Ibis, Steel Pine. Yes. Everything is quite local, quite cultural, and, and, I, and I love that. Listen, Tobago Carnival is coming up, so you're looking yeah. for a gift to give to somebody, whether they're leaving, right? They're coming for Tobago Carnival and leaving. Give them the yes. gift of my culture and me yes, because yes. there are some very local carnival characters in definitely. there that they can now think about and remember, right? Yes, definitely. The other books that you have, I Am the Tree. I found that title so interesting, yes, right? Yes, yes. I Am the Tree. What? <laughs> you're, you're the tree? Yes. <laughs> what's, what's up with that? Yeah, Tell honestly, me. I would say... You know, like people always have like one project that they feel attached to the most. Mm. This is it for me. Yeah. I feel like also you're not supposed to say you have a favorite. I'll be like, books blocking the ears, <laughs> you know. But I am the tree. I think yeah. it's my favorite because um, I think to me, I am the tree embodies like okay. We, everybody went through the pandemic together, right? We understand mm -hmm. that life is so fragile. I've personally had a lot of losses. I'm sure, you know, you've probably had everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like loss mm -hmm. is one thing that probably doesn't escape us, right? That's, that's one thing we could like probably have in common over. And um, I just started thinking and I was like, we have so much stories to tell in Trinidad and Tobago. And I feel like a lot of them are oral tradition, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what can I give back? to solidify like after I'm gone. Not to sound morbid, but I was like, you know, after I'm here no more. A like, legacy. Yeah, yeah. I want I wanna leave something, you know, and I want my I want these stories to be I kinda see myself as like a vessel. So that's why I said I am the tree, because mm -hmm. I, I, I I picked it based on there's a tree called the Banyan tree. Mm -hmm. Which people they describe it as a tree that lives for centuries because <clears throat> even after it's gone, its impact is still felt. Mm -hmm. And I kinda I, I kinda saw power in that and I wanted yeah. to replicate the and um yeah in the process i think i saw a, a costume by Falmiki miraj called the moko pui mm. and i saw it walking on it to me it felt like the culture walking forward that's the Ooh, image i got of it and i was so like good. i was like time to write yeah <laughs> tweet about us oprah says tweet. yeah <laughs> I saw the culture walking around. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I'm, that's how it was born. Yeah, yeah, I love the cover of the book because thank you, thank you. your feet are the roots of the exactly, tree. Yeah. And it looks like a mangrove. Yes, yeah, so the then mangrove. Then you have the scarlet yeah, ibis in there. Yeah, we have the kukriko. We have yeah. the hummingbird. We have everything good. <laughs> Listen, people, he didn't leave out Tobago, you know. No, no, I tell my friend. Listen, also. Trinidad and Tobago on exactly. this book. The kukriko there, yeah. right? And cookie calls, listen, we have a neighbor with a sugar apple tree. We <laughs> always in the people tree, right? Yes. Always in granny tree eating out her sugar apple. I don't think she's get one. Oh, God, poor thing. <laughs> right? They have a cookie call on the book. There's a scarlet ibis. I love this photo. Yeah. Is this a hibiscus in your hand with the, yeah. with the hummingbird? Yeah. Very nice. Such um, a rich array of local. Yeah. Thank um, you. Very good. Yeah, everything was intentional. Yeah. I was like, it's about... I was like being rooted in the mm. culture. I was like, oh, the ibis there tell her. I was like, I was like, even if it's not geographically correct, throw some kokriko in there. They fly and, over and to be in my photo. Thank you. <laughs> I said, I want everything. That's right. It's a, it's a melting pot. Exactly. Make sure everything in here. I exactly. Love this. Exactly. <laughs> Your next book. Yes. This book, I found the the reindeer book. Great. Where you find a reindeer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this book, honestly, this book threw everybody and for a loop. Snow. Yeah, what, what's up it threw everybody Kira? for a loop. It threw me for a loop. I love too. it though. Yeah, I joke and say I wrote this book by accident. Uh huh. Yeah, so I just I, I want to underscore the importance of attending. I'm sure you could probably you would attest to it. I, I want to underscore the importance of attending writing sessions. Mm -hmm. Like people always ask me, like, oh, do I have any inspiration? I say, go to a writing session. It could be on Zoom, yes. Google Meet, it could be in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I went to one. Um, this this author Ketriona Yvonne and she has like this writing session with, like people from around the world. I mean, there's like about ten of us on Zoom, and like we said this is about March. I was say this joke all the time, and um, she said write a story about something in your room, right? Right. Now I am obsessed with Christmas. Everybody probably started to realize that by yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so me in March and I didn't take down my decorations as yet. I'll admit it was a man after my own yeah. <laughs> It Listen. was, they were definitely yeah. upright. I, I, I have to Christmas confess, stuff. right? So, everybody writes in these serious stories about, and, and all good stories, huh? And I, so it's my turn to read now. It's like, I look at the rain there, and now he's a sign of joy. And they were like, <laughs> where did this come from? They was like, but we love it. And then yeah. they were like, are you a children's author? I said, not really. 
And they said, maybe this could be a good... Yeah. They said, like, why not actually release it? Like, what you plan to do with it, right? And I said, well, I just wrote it for the session. Mm -hmm. and really plan to do anything with it. Because I was supposed to release a third poetry book. Yeah. But it kind of made sense. I was like, you know what? I love Christmas. I really would like to grow this writing brand even more. So sometimes you have to take risks. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was... I, I don't think it was the worst risk I ever take in my life. Because mm -hmm. I think even my poetry books have have really transcended and a lot of children gravitate towards it anyway so i don't think i would have been alienating mm -hmm. any audience and i think by writing a children's christmas book i would honestly say i actually expanded my audience mm -hmm. so it was probably one of the best decisions yeah. i ever made because yeah. uh, listen people christmas book people love christmas adults yes. body book for the kids they bought it for themselves um so it's like uh, to me i think it was yes i like it and i'm passionate about it it was also more um economic in terms of like a career decision yeah um i think it worked out really well in that regard as well did some merchandise surrounding it like mm -hmm. um i had christmas cards with the book Very cover nice. and stuff like that because yeah. like you have to keep thinking you have to keep like um like i tell people like i joke and say but i never sleep yeah because <laughs> i'm like my brain is always like <laughs> but that's kind of how you have to go because yeah. you can't just stop at okay i put a book Ooh. All right, put on the shelf. No, like that's when it now start. Yeah, so you have to keep going and um. Yeah, yeah it, was, I, it was fun. <laughs> I have to agree with you. I talk to authors all the time. Yeah, and I keep telling them. And of course, let me tell you, there is a difference between a hobbyist author, true, right, and yeah. a career author. Yep, yep, yep. If you feel you're a hobbyist author, and what is that? Somebody who writes yeah. just for writing, whenever yeah. I feel like it, you know, just like if you're a hobbyist gardener. Yeah. You yeah. go out there and take care of plants. When you feel like it's for inspiration, it's for the love of it, it isn't to sell plants, yeah, right? exactly. If that's what you're doing, please, nobody's criticizing you. Enjoy it. Yeah. But there are a lot of persons who want writing to be a full-time career. Yeah. And if you're going to be doing that, Think about other products besides just your book products, yeah. right? You can have bookmarks, Kiran, he yeah. did um, cards, yeah. right, for Christmas. He has a coloring book. Think of all of these products, widen your base and your target Definitely. market, right? Yeah. So just putting it out there. And this is Literacy Month, actually. Yes, September yeah. is Literacy Month. And you, you went into a writing group yeah right yeah so i'm going to throw it out there for persons if you would like to start a nice writing group with yeah. your friends it's this is a great month to do it Definitely. literacy month the 8th of september is literacy day so feel encouraged to sit with your friends and write and just quickly to explain a liter a writing group or a writing session is where you say, listen, Sunday at 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. you're going to be writing for two hours, yep, yep. right? We'll give a prompt, and, and you could give a prompt of anything. Anything, Right? Yeah. The prompt could be mango. Yeah. <laughs> anything right. at all. And you and your friends, it could be on Zoom, it could yeah. be on a WhatsApp call, it could be in Google Meet. Yeah. You'll sit wherever you want in your home and write, Definitely. right? So just run it out there, it's a nice idea for any group of persons to do. If even you have children at home, that's also a nice exercise for them. And I right? love the fact that you mentioned mango because I have a poem about mango. Uh -huh. I love mango. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can literally yeah. write about anything. You know? I, I love mango. And that's a, a, you know, it's a good segue. We have an author next week. <laughs> who, yeah, she wrote a book about mangoes. You nice. get into that. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, when we talk about your books mm -hmm. and these four books you've written right what is your inspiration kieran right so so i would say the inspiration started off i would say a little sad you know um the around the pandemic you know a lot of blood a lot of losses um so for me um i would i kind i could say i lost my career in a sense you know mm. i was in medical school i tried transferring scholarships at that point everybody knew when the pandemic happened borders like everybody was focused on covid obviously was the overlying issue mm. but underlying was everything else borders closing funds with scholarship and all this drama so mm -hmm. um i was trying to like transfer schools and i just didn't work out signed up like I don't want to say Stockholm, but like mm -hmm. Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And around that time, um, my granddad had cancer. So I was like, oh, like what next, you know? Mm -hmm. And he passed away. So that was like two big losses back to back. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of just took a step back from medicine. 
um maybe a big step back because i haven't gone back to it yet. yeah but um i think i needed to like just separate myself from it mentally for a little bit mm-hmm. and i kind of was lost and i was like wondering i know like what next and my mom she, big up mommy big up mom she was yeah. like um she's like what do you love outside of this and I actually, it's strange because some people, because I'm into sciences, this is either sciences or English, but I like the two. Me too. Yeah, right? Me I love too. the two. And ironically, you wouldn't believe that like, even in pre-med, that there was an English course, which mm-hmm. was so ironic. Because you have to write reports. Exactly. You and have to dean, write experiments. Yeah, that's and something our dean You know, they need said, to know what you're writing. Yeah. They can't be reading it and be like, what's this trash? Exactly. And they were saying, <laughs> I would have, like, that was the biggest yeah. thing, like a lot of, um, some doctors they weren't able to like articulate what they wanted to say so that's why they implemented yeah. the, pre- the english course in the premier so i was actually really excited well, about finally it. yeah because <laughs> doctors they listen you all need to be able to explain yourself <laughs> right patients come in front of you you can't be just saying well you have this and calling all the long you need to talk <laughs> yeah right yeah. so i like that yeah, yeah. so I, I to me i feel like english and writing always followed me um when I was younger, ironically, maybe I wasn't the best writer, and I, I had a love hate relationship with it because I mean, if we take a couple of years back, I'm actually grew up asthmatic. So when I was younger, not that I liked to read it, but my I, I was I don't want to say forced, right? Yeah. I don't say mommy forced me, but um, she bought like a lot of Hardy Boy books and that kind of thing. Oh. And eventually, yeah, <laughs> eventually, you know, I, I was like, you know what, this reading yeah. thing is not so bad. Um, I started writing poetry at the age around 10. I lost some of them, maybe for the best, because the rhymes weren't all that <laughs> in my head. Okay, I'll, re- I'll say maybe for the yeah, best. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, I actually never said this one out loud, but mm-hmm. I'll say it because I could laugh at it. Yeah. Um, I wrote one like, how could one be so cold? When I think of you, I think of mold. And I was like, when I look back at that book, I was like, who got me vexed when I was nine? Like, I didn't know the lolly man didn't pass. Or I don't know who got me vexed. <laughs> but, that's, but I lost that book. Maybe it would be fun if I could find it and yeah. publish it as a joke. And like, just as a, as a free something. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it would be fun to, to, to compare. Exactly. But um, like thank God for growth idea. in writing. But yeah, flash forward to now. I always mm-hmm. said that when the writings get better, I would actually really want to publish something. And um, mm-hmm. I feel like all roads in my life kind of was leading to this. And I didn't realize. Yeah. Like, even um, in Cape, I did communication studies. We had a part of the IA, you have to write either a poem, a story or something. I wrote a poem um, called I Am Jazz, and it actually opens the first book. Oh. So I actually, I, I was said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, this, that poem kind of, it, it ignited something in me. And my teacher, she was like, you have a gift. And she, so I was said, you know, if ever I were to do something one day, maybe mm-hmm. this poem has to be included. Yeah. So when I did the book, I put it as is, no edit, and yeah. I, um, I kind of give a shout out to my teacher. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a long journey of like different things happening at different times throughout my life. Yeah. But it kind of all led to this. I and in this it. moment, yeah, I really yeah. wanted to publish. And yeah, who would have thought I ended up here? So it was Poet Tree, then I Am the Tree, yeah. um, which led to Rain the Hour, and then my culture you know and I me. Mean? <laughs> uh, we have more coming in us. So Listen, like, that start a custom. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going on a quick break, but don't be cold and make us think of mold. <laughs> All right? Warm up yourself. <laughs> Snap fingers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come back. Come back with Kieran, Isaac, and I. We're chatting. We're having some energy juice, and we're talking about poetry. When we come back from the break, we are going to be continuing this conversation and we're heading into our read aloud session. He is going to be reading to us from two of his books. So don't go far, get your drink, get your snack and come right back. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> Listen, Kiran and I here having a good time, yeah. having tea and juice and tea and tea and talking about church and socials and talking after church parents. Stop torturing your children. <laughs> Right? Church finish, go home and eat the food. <laughs> yeah, we feel like we live the same life. <laughs> Listen, your books, I feel like they have a running theme. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I don't I think I mind your business enough <laughs> to see it. They have a running theme of the environment. Definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. They're outdoors. They there's animals in it, there's yeah. nature in it. Yeah. Was this intentional? What's yeah. the mission behind this? You hit the nail on the head. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um that's basically who I am as a person. Um Love animals, love outdoors, nature, and culture. So, like, these mm-hmm. books kind of encapsulate what 
together and they kind of marry them together in a way um yeah it's like so that's my way to kind of express myself so i joke and i say well not a joke the poetry was the start mm -hmm. and i say poetry represents the branches of all of who i am right mm -hmm. and poetry starts with like different sections which talks about culture nature and these kind of things and then these are things i explore as i move along in other books mm -hmm. so it, it's just to me i feel like it's almost like synonymous with who i am mm -hmm. i love nature and i have dogs yeah big animal lover um i feel very grounded when i'm in nature or mm -hmm. with like even the cover with the carny swamp yeah i love going to carny swamp it's very um i find it therapeutic um cathartic um so yeah water big, yeah oh, anything with water very, very the sound calming. of the ocean oh. yeah i could like calm you know quiet down your mind so sometimes if i feel like everything is too loud and noisy mm -hmm. i might go to neat yeah if i can't i'll like listen to you yeah. know like watch uh actually i made this joke with my sister um i watch like those national geographic documentaries and stuff to to relax and my sister I was like it. she's like you didn't just relax yeah <laughs> she's like She's like, I love that for you. And she walk on. We do that. <laughs> we live in the same life, Kieran. Yeah, yeah. Listen, my household, so my father passed away quite yeah. early on in our life. But it was, that. you know, it, things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a you know, yeah. story of loss. Yeah. But when we sit down in our living room, it's either we watching some geographic, Telling some her, yeah. animal, something. Yeah. Or sci-fi. Yeah, that's that's literally it. <laughs> Nobody fighting for the remote. Eh? I know people used to fight for remote and now we fight for remote. <laughs> it's the same thing we're watching. Yeah. The channel not changing mm. and nobody complaining. Yeah. You know, it really gives you and it, it teaches you so much yeah, totally, yeah. about the world around us. It's a pity that um a lot of the shows, even yeah. though, you know, um, they're talking about animals. It's a pity we don't have a lot of local content, yeah, yeah. right? So you go away learning a lot about lions and tigers and bears, yeah, right? Yeah. Not about the ocelot, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, not about the capybara, yeah, not about any of exactly, all local creatures, exactly, really. Exactly. But you know, learning is learning. We'll the take it where it. we can get yeah. it, right? Until some smart person starts a local geographic show where they go yeah. into the forest, yeah. right? And run down the capybara <laughs> and sit down in the bush whole night. <laughs> right? I to love it. Film yeah, those war constructors of ants. We, we was awaited it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. We, we're giving you all ideas. Yeah, 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 film. yeah, yeah. Come. We Just want... pass any credits. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all. We don't want, we don't want your money, right? We just want the content. You know, I love the fact that your books have that environmental Definitely, spin, yeah. um, nature and all of that. When we look at the issues we're dealing with as a small island developing state, yeah. right? Acids. Yeah. You hear that being bandied about in terms yeah. of climate change. Definitely. Yeah. Do you feel like your books are lending any support to that movement yeah. in terms of getting us... Uh, because we signed an agreement, the Paris yeah. Accord, yeah. right? Where we're looking to have our emissions drop by 30%, I think it's by 2030. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like your books and the conversations that your books may inspire yeah. is having any, even in an indirect way, yeah. an effect or impact on yeah. how we're looking at the climate, how yeah. we're looking at the environment? I love, first of all, I love this question. I'm happy that you touched on that. Because, yes, actually, so my first book... Um, there's actually a piece called The World is Our Oyster, mm. which talks about um, our, the imbalance of the relationship between man and the ocean, you know, how we overfish and mm -hmm. all these different pollutants and stuff like that. Yeah. And then the second book, there's a, a poem called Wetland Song, which is a song slash poem. It talks about preserving our mangroves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, to me, I was trying to stick in that kind of plea to, to save and fight on behalf of nature. And... Um, Ironically, there's a uh, in Trinidad there's something called the Mangrove Festival, mm. which I was invited to perform. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. When was but this? It was about two weeks ago, I believe. Really? Yeah, there's a um, shout out. I think it's ecosystem approach. Mm -hmm. There's something they're trying to do annually, which I thought was so wonderful, and yeah. they reached out to me. I really wish I could have made it, but hopefully next time. And um, so they, I think they knew that my work is like some of my writings about her. So I was actually really touched that I was like, okay, well, that means my work is going out there, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I would say that sometimes in life we want to do so much, 
and we want to contribute and fight on behalf of certain things and I think sometimes you could only start where you can start. So I say, like, if you're yeah. a writer, you yeah. could write about it. Singers might sing about, yes. you know, you know, you have that, to kind of start where you could start. That's what creativity is about, Definitely. right? Yeah, to be yeah. able to use your gift to bring a message. Yes, right? yes, yes. And I love that mangrove people. If if you're looking at the show and you're invited, Kiran, come to Tobago and do something too. Yes. Because there are <laughs> tons of mangroves in Tobago, yes, yes, especially yes. on that side where from um cove come down mm -hmm. right so even magdalena side we have yeah. quite a bit of mangrove um down by where you would be heading to gibson bay yeah. right there's I a jetty there this morning. yeah there's yeah. a jetty there um and many of y'all know it's yeah gibson bay and gibson jetty and they have they mm -hmm. load up the boats for the um glass bottom right. boats yeah, there yeah 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 there are mangroves everywhere yeah, and we right. all know you know Sometimes those mangroves could be a little gross because if that tide, <laughs> no true, if yeah, the yeah, tide yeah. So, goes yeah. out, uh -huh. you know, everything that we threw into the mangrove uh -huh. and the sea just sits yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just put, I'm giving side eye to all the litter bugs Listen. in Tobago and who who come to Tobago and who in Tobago. Yeah. Litter bugs, stop it. Just this morning I was looking at the mangroves. The first thing I saw I saw a bird and then I saw a bottle. We and fed up all you. Yeah, we fed up. Come to man, litter bugs. We fed up all you. They're stinking up the place. Yes, stop it. Yes, yes. The mangroves cannot clean themselves exactly. by removing garbage. They clean the mm -hmm. air. That's exactly. the thing. Yeah. Those roots, those aerial yeah. roots, they serve such a good purpose. Yeah. Hurricanes would mash us up without that, you know. Actually, I love that you mentioned that. So I'm going to switch and do my mangrove poem instead. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Listen, we're going on a quick break and when we come back, we're going to be red too. So, listen, go on. I have key energy you drink. I don't know what you drink at home. You get your drink, you get yourself something nice to eat and don't go far. We'll be back in a few minutes. We're here chatting with Kieran Isaac, four-time author and when we come back, he'll be reading to us from two different books. So don't go far. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back, viewers across Trinidad and the Tobago, wherever you may be viewing from, whether you're in Curacao, Dominica, Trinidad and Tobago, or the wider Caribbean, or you're viewing this on YouTube, right? Wherever you are, we are very happy to have you back with us. And without any further ado, we're heading into that read aloud segment, right? Yes. <laughs> you know how we do it. <laughs> I'm going to get comfy. I'm ready. All right, nice. So, um, since we were on the topic of um, wetlands, I'm actually going to start with one called Wetland Song. It's a bit of a song and a poem in one, so enjoy. <clears throat> Sha -la, la la this is my wetland song that I'll sing in my head all the day long. This can be a song too if you realize that our beauty resides inside your eyes. First, I'll take you to the river, the esteemed champ. Then our second largest mangrove, that's Karani Swamp. My song cascades acres of herbaceous marsh, a nursery for all within me that battle the harsh. A breathing ground for new life, possibilities and hope. A nest to appear that would now elope. High importance in mitigating coastal erosion and storm disturbance. I bear it all on my back with such exuberance. Sha -la, la la this is my wetland song that I'll sing in my head all the day long. This can be a song too if you realize that our beauty resides inside your eyes. Through carbon sequestration, I buffer the impacts of climate change. With me batting in your corner, a total rearrange. Our sister, the Boko Reef Born Accord Lagoon Complex, suddenly makes her mark on our incredulous conquest. Degradative effects of land usage now change my key from natural and melodic, not even harmonic minor. Now it's just major crisis, the new natural rhetoric. Farming and industrialization, my arch nemesis, 
we weren't meant to be the enemy, but to walk hand in hand like brother and sis. Sha la la la, this is my wetland song that I'll sing in my head all the day long. This can be a song too if you realize that our beauty resides inside your eyes. Alright, so that one was wetland song from I am the tree. Mm -hmm. Alright, so next we're gonna go over to get information let me rock the ship okay. so this one is about um sailor mass and i actually when i was doing it i got the opportunity to um get some information from keith simpson mm. who is you know sailor mass extraordinary mm -hmm. all right so get information let me rock the ship walking shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip get information with linens of stockings or undershirt this papier machine nose points to the time of my birth Get information, let we powder your face. If you're afraid them thing, then this not your race. Get information, let we bend the wire. Crab sculpting to gun to red, now you're under fire. Get information, let we live this feathered fantasy. All part of the marching and wheeling of this fiery artillery. Get information, keep this fire going. Incinerate this confetti that has been carelessly blowing. Get information, you'll respect my insignia. Rocking the ship, this embodies my kinesthesia. Get information, let me dance the Mariko. Other dances will follow, resembling that of the limbo. Get information, blow on, my dear trumpeter. Commence my show, I now become your theater. Get information, pay attention to the clock on my head. Time is running, but this thing isn't dead. Get information from King Crab to London Bridge. Hands interlocked, mates, let's climb this ridge. Get information, let me rock the ship, walking shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip. All right, so that one was get information. Mm -hmm. Now we will go to the things I will do for starch mango. <laughs> It's this is going to be interesting. Yeah. This may or may not be based on a true story. <laughs> when you see a vagrant sitting on the side of the street eating a bag of starch mangoes, and you contemplate being a vagrant just for five minutes, long lost brother, is that you? Come, let us reason together. I would name my newborn child after whoever produced the best crop of starch mango. I would sit down in the middle of a flimsy seat in a maxi if starch mango was at the end of the destination. I would let the person after me in the doubles line rush me if a bag of starch mango was the end result of this charitable gesture. I would go a week without eating chicken. A matter of fact, we'll go back to that one. I would walk from Arima to Barakpur and back upside down on one leg for a bag of starch mango. Finally, I would write a poem about all the absurd things I would do for starch mango. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, slap, slap. I feel like we got some exclusive content here. <laughs> Have you sung this, your poetry to anybody else? Not, not on this level. Maybe like uh, I had a, a launch and mm. I did... Uh, had about like 40 family and friends and, Listen, and I did it. guys, but book club corner, exclusive, exclusive <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's like the Disney pre-release. Oh, <laughs> good stuff. Listen, I feel such talent. Thank you, thank you. Such talent. I mean, <laughs> oh my God, I, I can't tell you. If I knew I was being serenaded, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I knew I was going to get her out of full McCoy, out of full McCoy with energy drink, because I'm telling you, Good stuff. Listen, take poets it, out it. there, you can <laughs> listen. You can put music, and we were talking about that. Yeah, definitely. Doing an audio book. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Listen, we don't have enough time today <laughs> to talk about all the things we have to talk about. We're uh, almost yeah. out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Without any further ado, because listen, this you're gonna get it on YouTube. So if you missed it. You're going to get it recapped on YouTube, right? And for all of you all who saw it and heard Mr. Kieran Isaac singing, right? You'll grab it from YouTube tomorrow and make sure you send it to all his people who think he can't sing, right? That's <laughs> so right. Listen, listen, listen. Put him in the choir. Put him in the choir. 
right? That's hilarious. The boy could sing. He got pipes. <laughs> We're heading to the green room <laughs> where we provide insights, uh, brand and book marketing insights for authors and publishers, right? And today we have quite an interesting conversation. But before we get into the question, we want to thank our sponsor, Mansa Enterprises. They have a bookstore in Calder Hall and you can give them a call. They're 469 4326 and they open from Monday to Friday. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they have a special offer going on. You get this voucher, $150 voucher. If you go and spend one, you spend $500 in mm -hmm. in-store, you get a $150 voucher, which means you're getting money back. And if you go on our Facebook page and you like our page, you like Mansa's page, and you comment, I support local, you will get that voucher, right? Mm -hmm. And we also want to talk about, um, yeah, so you can get this voucher from our Facebook page if you follow the instructions. I'm seeing people going on the page and just saying, I, I support local. <laughs> and they're waiting to hear if they win. You can't win if you do not do the instructions, right? So just letting you know. If nobody called you, you did not follow the instructions. <laughs> And we want to also thank um, this company, Caribbean Book Marketing Hub TT. We're doing an author directory of Caribbean authors wherever you may be in the Caribbean or in the diaspora. So you can scan that code. You can get the link and register. When the directory comes out, you're going to be listed in there. And if you want more information, you can give Caribbean Book Marketing Hub a call. That is 761-8790. And if you're calling from outside of Trinidad and Tobago, it's 1-868-761-8790. Our question today in the green room, how many ISBN numbers does my book need? Your book needs an ISBN number for each a version of it. In other words, each of these versions need an ISBN number. So if you have an ebook, an audiobook, a soft copy or a hard copy of your book, yes. you need four ISBN numbers yes. then. If you only have an ebook, you will only need one ISBN number. So we're just putting it out there. If you're getting a book published and you're going to be publishing different versions of your book, Please be aware that you will need a number per version, right? Yes. So if you have an audiobook, an ebook, a soft cover, right? A nice little soft paperback. Yeah. And if you have a hard cover, which a lot of people are doing, a collector's item, you will need, yeah. right? So just letting you know, don't go around the place thinking it could take your one ISBN number and put it on everything, <laughs> right? That it's not the way you're going to run into problems with yes. that. Yeah. Kiran, tell us about your books. How many ISBN numbers do you have? Yes, you definitely need, yeah, as you said, you need one for each. Then you have, have separate ones for the ebook version. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you definitely do need multiple, which reminds me, I actually need to get one. For, actually, no, I do. Yeah, I have one for that too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have, you basically have for, if it's a coloring book, an ebook, audio book, you have to get for all, you have different ones. Um, so you end up having multiple. Mm -hmm. And then some people, you can even buy it in a block. Yes, um, a block which is of what I probably should have done at this that. Yeah. <laughs> or you could yeah. buy it singly as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's good to buy it singly, mm -hmm. but if you know, if you have foresight yeah. that you're going to be producing more books. Yeah. It's good to buy a block of five or a yeah. block of ten. And they're just twenty US each. Yeah. And I know when I said just I know people say just twenty yeah. US. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she paying, she paying for my ISBN numbers or what? No, but what I'm saying, I heard um, authors in the states mm -hmm. and they pay right. 120 oh, wow. US. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now remember, our exchange rate will bring it up. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, but yeah. they pay 120 US per ISBN number. Right, right. And they also have to get a library of Congress number to add to okay. that. Right? The right. Congress number is free. Yeah. But that means they have to get plenty numbers for mm -hmm. the book. So just letting you know it's $20 and you can get it through Nalis. Yeah. Right? Nalis is the go-to yes. for yeah. your ISBN numbers and yeah. they are commissioned through CARICOM yep. to issue um, ISBN numbers throughout the Caribbean. Yes. So to authors, get the ISBN numbers and sort out yourself. 
Listen, we out of time, but I had a question to ask you, Kieran, because two, obviously, we want to know where to get your book. Right. But I am seeing every time you look on Kieran's social media, <laughs> you're seeing. I have a book here. I put it in scribbles and quills. <laughs> I put it in RIK. I put it in here. I put it... Tell us how how were you able to one get your book so widely distributed, which I think is so phenomenal. Thank you. Talk to the authors out there and tell them how to get their book widely distributed, like you did. Yes, definitely. Um, I say it just takes a lot of putting yourself out there. Um, you have to. He could email, call, go in person, mm -hmm. a lot of different avenues, but it really takes you putting yourself out there. That's the first thing. Um, even if you email them and you call them and they don't respond, that's not a no. Um, cause think about it this way. They're probably going through, they have so much authors out there. They're probably mm -hmm. going through all the, you know, the correspondence. Yeah. So, if, like, try to think about that. But yeah, definitely um, network, put yourself out there. Try to mm -hmm. be, and also try to, like, see, you know, like, if the book um, kind of, like, vibe, kind of, like, see what kind of, Books have any store, see yeah, if it's kind of a good fit. Yeah, if it's a good that's fit for you your want. book as well. And um, yeah, follow up. Like, that's how I got into Scribbles. And it was the first bookstore I ever got into. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, that would yeah. always hold a place in my heart, that's, you know. That's, that's and so people sweet. based um, yeah. bookshop, um, J it was in Jadu Zarima. Um, academics plus well you must get it on arima because you, yeah you, you, from arima. from arima right i'm from from arima originally too oh, right nice. so yeah we have two arima people hey, so big up arima. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> and you got an award from arima um you know the yeah. borrow for your book and stuff yeah. that's so good so kudos to all Thank the you, yeah. arima authors and also yeah, kudos to the nalis library yeah, because they have a first time authors program yes, yes, we need yeah. to continue doing more for the authors right mm. before we head into the wrap-up tell Tell us where readers can get all of your books. Yes, definitely. So, um, Scribbles and Quills, paper-based bookshop. And you get thing about these, um, they're, on, they're physically in Trinidad, but they're also on Instagram and they ship via TT Post to Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon, Kindle, Digital Canopy, which is like a... a Kindle vision, but for Caribbean books, yeah. you know, so there's that. They're no stranger to us. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. them. Then we have, um, then recently you got it on Carib Shopper, so they ship Caribbean products to USA and Canada. You mm -hmm. can get it there. And even it's, um, the coloring book in particular is on the Christmas children's book is on Barnes and Noble website, Target, mm -hmm. Walmart, all the online retailers, Amazon. Right. Um, so uh, basically, I, I do can sell like I like a book on Villa Bush uh, everywhere, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but a nice book I like Villa it. Eh? All book and villas are nice. Yeah. I love them. It's so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to you on your four books Thank you and so for much. being so widely distributed. Congratulations for all the work that you're doing. Thank you. To so get much. your book out there, I appreciate you know, it. authors self published authors you do a human's work sure. you're not only opening doors for yourself you're opening doors for the next generation of writers so we thank you for all the work you're putting in and please don't stop we need your books out there we need to see what you're saying we need to hear what you're saying we need you to sing it <laughs> All right, we need you to sing it, write it, talk it, you know, bring all the versions. Remember, audiobooks are also a good way to do. Absolutely. And before we go, you know, just make sure that you check us out Facebook, yeah. Instagram. We're also on Twitter. If you love Twitter, mm -hmm. I love a good Twitter. Yeah, you, you know, we, we tweet a lot and, and nice. go on the Googler, you'll find us as well. Nice. Book Club <laughs> Corner, you'll nice. find us everywhere, and you can catch up on all the episodes of Book Club Corner on our youtube channel and nice. that's book club corner tt you'll see all our past um authors we've spoken to nice. um and booksellers and you'll see all the ones to come nice. and we want to let you know what's coming next week we have a fantastic author coming up next week and that is yeshiba she is going to be chatting with us she's a children's author and you may be looking at this graphic and saying but why the put the book twice it's because she has translated into spanish nice. and she's going to be talking to us about getting your book translated into a different language right and we can't wait to have her here with us so without any further ado we want to thank you for being here on book club corner and join us next week wednesday from 11 a.m to be updates on facebook on youtube or you can check us out on the thursday where all episodes are uploaded to our youtube 
channel. Thank you for being here with us. Cheers to you, Kiran. Yes. Cheers, Cheers. to you. Enjoy. <laughs> and thank you, K and G. Thank you for all our sponsors. Yes. We have Neve, um, I for Design, who gives us these beautiful centerpieces. And Jofie Wines. We'll be heading into the wines next week again. We want to thank you for sticking with us, for supporting us, and encourage you to support local. Support a local author. Buy a book and make sure you keep the economy running. So thank okay. you for being here with us and we'll see you next week.